Guys, it's happening. Oh my gosh, bro. I never thought this day would come again. Oh my gosh. Back-to-back -back uploads. Dude, I cannot believe that. It, you know how long it's been since I've done, like, uploads of back-to-back -back days? Probably since the NH5 days, NH4 championship mode days. Uh, 2020, 2021, it's probably been three, four years. That's sad. That is actually sad. But, hey guys, it's just I here. Um, here to recap the Ravens free agency. Not that it's over or anything, um, but here's everything that's happened so far, because a lot's happened, and then we'll, for now on, when news breaks of the Ravens, uh, Ravens flock, I will get you on, up to date, and I'll try to do better with uploading and all that stuff. But here we go. Uh, so thanks to Ravens Nation Live, shout out to him on Twitter, um, getting me all the updates and all that stuff, um, here, so it's easy to, to go back on. So there's a list of players we signed and lost and all that stuff. So here we go. So, here are the players that we have signed. Uh, re here, I'll start with the players we... The new players. I'll start with the new players. So, main one is uh, Derrick Henry. He signed a two-year... I think it was a $16 million deal. Up to $20 million uh, with its sentence and all that stuff. Um, big news for the Ravens. Everyone expected this because it makes sense for the Ravens to get a guy like Derrick Henry. To get him at the same backfield as Lamar Jackson... That's going to be deadly for the rest of the league. The rest of the league did not know what the heck they just did. The number one running back when it comes to the most rushing yards the last few seasons. Same with Lamar in the QB range with rushing yards. Obviously, we know how good Lamar could be throwing and running the ball. And uh, Derrick Henry could probably do the same. He can he can throw the ball. We've seen him throw some touchdowns before. Derrick Henry can be a quarterback. Um, excited for these next two years. If we don't win a Super Bowl, I swear to gosh, John Harbaugh uh, might be the end of you. I'm not going to lie. But we won't get overboard with that. Um, overboard. Speaking of board, we, uh, got back Chris Board. We signed Chris Board. Um, he was on the team, I think, briefly last year, uh, for special teams and whatnot. And after we lost Delshawn Phillips, uh, someone who was really good for our special teams, uh, we needed someone to fill in that gap. And Chris Board can definitely do that. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know a lot about him. Uh, a lot of these players we signed, I don't know a lot about. But welcome to Baltimore, nonetheless. Chris Board, welcome back to Baltimore, because you were technically with us, uh, last season. Uh, Josh Jones... We signed O-lineman Josh Jones, big because we traded Morgan Moses to the Jets. Um, we started uh, Ronnie Stanley's contract, all that good stuff. So the only two players, I think, uh, that we had in 2023 on our O-line that we're still getting in 2024, I think, are Ronnie Stanley and Tyler Lindenbaum. Everyone else left. Kevin Zyla left, Morgan Moses left, everyone. Um, we also signed corner Kadar Holman. Um, ladies and gentlemen, so, uh, we lost Ronald Darby, we lost a lot of players, I'll get to that, I'll get to that, um, but Kadar Holman, uh, he was with the Packers, then recently he was with the Texans, um, he made some good plays, also on special teams, again, we lost Elshon Phillips, had to do something there, um, so, yeah, Kadar Holman, uh, welcome to Baltimore, uh, help with the secondary, re-sign Arthur Millette, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it, yeah, okay, let's talk about the players who re uh, like I just mentioned, we re-signed Arthur Millette to a two-year deal, um, Arthur Millette was one of those players, along with Ronald Darby, and especially Brandon Stevens, Marlon Humphrey definitely had one of, if not the worst season of his, uh, statistical career last season, he was injured a lot, remember, he had that foot surgery at the beginning of the season, then he had a calf injury, uh, late in the season, so that took him out for quite a bit of the season, uh, he was productive, somewhat, besides letting the George Pickens touchdown in week five against the Steelers kind of cost us a win there. Well, he, he didn't really cost us a win. A lot, everyone did. The, the dropping passes, then Lamar throws the intercept. It, it was a disaster, that game. Uh, but anyways, Arthur Millette was very productive, especially when it comes to corner blitzes. Uh, this guy was, was unblocked. He had like two or three sacks, and they were unblocked. He just came in from the corner slot and... He got him. He got him from the. He kind of from the corner. Uh, that sounds. That's his worth. Hold on. Don't, don't take that out of context. Uh, but Arthur Millette, welcome to Baltimore. Yes, sir. Welcome back to Baltimore. I should say. Josh Johnson resigned him. I think on a one year deal. Um, he might be back up now to Lamar Jackson, or maybe he'll be third string behind Lamar and Malik Cunningham. Uh, only time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but Josh Johnson, yeah, obviously. Uh, the one time, the one time he did start was Week 16. Uh, against the Bengals, the the game that Joe Burrow uh, threw 500 yards and like five touchdowns in that crazy game, um, he did his best though. He did his best. We last heard we last heard from him from filling in for Brock Purdy in the eight, in the NFC Championship game in 2022 for the 49ers. Didn't work out so well. Uh, Josh Johnson though, I got faith in you, buddy. Don't worry. Brent Urban we resigned. Uh, Brent Urban was really solid for us last season. Then again, so was every player in our defense. 
Uh, so getting him back and at least a a defender back is is big right there. And Brent Urban, so good to have him back. Blake Harrison's also back. Uh, a lot of he was a player that was also injured uh, last season for a little bit. Didn't get to see a whole lot of him, but I think he can be productive uh, or, or linebacking uh, core, if you will. Is that what we're calling it? Um, is working out really well, even with Patrick Queen being gone. I think guys like Trenton Simpson and here's another one. Malik Harrison could probably pop off. We'll see. I think both Harrison and Urban both signed on a one year deal. Um, also resigned on a one year deal is Nelson Aguilar. Uh, Nell Nelly was uh, really solid, really, really overproductive. Well, not overproductive. I, that's not the right word. Um, he ex exceeded our expectations. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, cause Nelly was supposed to be our wide receiver, what three or four or something. He comes in there and he didn't drop a whole lot of passes. He still dropped passes cause he's Nelson Aguilar. I'm not going to, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I love you, Nelson Aguilar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but drop him. He was out of there dropping him like Nelson Aguilar. What's that? What's that news interview? That one guy, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I, I don't know exactly what he said, but anyways, um, but Nelson Aguilar again, back on a one year deal. Uh, I think he could be really good um, for us this season. Good veteran receiver. Um, he could be productive. I think he could still be productive. Uh, the big re-signing, though, was of Justin Matabike. Re-signed him to a four-year, $98 million deal. Uh, so big right there, making him one of the highest-paid defensive tackles in the league. Um, he deserves it. He had 13 and a half sacks last season, I believe. Uh, I think he had one of the playoffs in the AFC Championship. He split one, I think, with... Uh, was it Michael Pierce, the other defensive tackle? Uh, so good for him. Yeah, he he really broke out and was really productive. Uh, one of the biggest players on him defense to be productive. Um, so yeah, good to have Beaks back. Let's go, let's go, Beaks. Sorry, I'm still coming down with uh, <laughs> still recovering from allergies and all that stuff. All right, now here is the long list of players we lost. This is gonna be the big part of the video. All right, so let's start off. Okay, let's go in order here. We got Gus Edwards. He is going to the Chargers, I think, on a two-year deal. Um, Gus the Bus, really productive for us last season, as a lot of these players were. He had 13 touchdowns. Uh, he was amazing. There were a lot of good good plays that he had. Um, he had that 80-yard run, uh, or I guess, I guess he had a catch, uh, technically, uh, against the Lions. He had that insane, angry run against the Seahawks. Uh, he got like a 40 yard run there. He was breaking tackles and all that stuff. Gus Edwards really did well. Uh, yeah, Gu Gus the bus. He can, he can go. He's a, he's a very underrated running back. I'm excited to see what the Chargers can do with him under Greg Roman, who we all know with Baltimore fans know Greg Roman. Uh, a lot of these players went to the ops. They went to the ops. <laughs> Don't know why, but they did. Uh, Geno Stone went to the uh, Bengals, on a, I think also on a two-year deal. Uh, Geno Stone, obviously, seven interceptions last season. He came out of nowhere. He really did. Uh, and he was really productive um, last season. I, I'm not going to keep saying that to a lot of these players. Um, but Geno Stone, yeah, he had some big plays on two-point conversions that not a lot of people were talking about. But I noticed he broke he broke some plays. He did, he did this, did that. Uh, really productive. Kyle Hamilton obviously was the most productive when it came to the safety role. Marcus Williams was, eh, I think Marcus Williams is still just, he's fine. It's just, Kyle Hamilton though had an all pro season, but Geno Stone was robbed of a pro bowl, but he now gets to shine in Cincy, I guess, uh, with Joe Shiesty and all that. And now I understand why he didn't want to return the pick six. The easy pick six that he had week two against the Bengals was because he was tired. I knew that was an L excuse. He just secretly knew he wanted to play for the Bengals. Good grief. All right. We had not one but two players go to the Jaguars. We had uh, our for former kick returner slash wide receiver pro bowler, Devin Duvernay, go to the Jaguars. I think it's on a one- or two-year deal. I don't know. It just says what players we lost. It doesn't say the contract. Um, but uh, Du was really good for us in 2022. Obviously, he had that 103-yard kick return against the Dolphins. He had that. He had another one against the Chiefs. He had. He's had some good returns. This season, the only thing he did was have a 60 or 70 yard return against the Titans. I again, he was injured too, because it's the Ravens. We have a lot of injured players. Uh, we weren't that injured this season. Uh, one of the reasons why we we got to show who we were, get to show our full potential. We did. We didn't have too many injuries as much as we did in 2022, and certainly not as much as we did in 2021. Uh, so we never see that again. Good grief. Uh, but Devin Duvernay. Um, I don't know what happened to him, again, injured, but 
see what he can do with the Jags. Ronald Darby also went to the Jaguars. Uh, again, as I mentioned, him and Arthur Melez, well as Brandon Stevens, really productive to fill in the role of Marlon Humphrey, who was injured for most of the season. Darby broke up. I think, like, when it comes to, like, YPG, or so, so, there was a stat that he was, like, top 10 in uh, among all corners. He was number two or three or something. Big for Ronald Darby. Good job there. All right. Oh, there's another player in the O-line that, we, uh, le that uh, left. I forgot about him. John Simpson went to the Jets. Um, big for the Jets because they need an O-line. Uh, they really got O-line. They got two of our they got two of our players. I'll, I'll mention Morgan Moses later on. Um, but obviously John Simpson. Again, uh, all you're going to hear is uh, freaking if he changes, if he stays the number, you're going to hear holding offense number 76 or false start offense number 76. This guy had like over 10 penalties. For us last season, it was freaking annoying. But good, but good luck to you, John Simpson. Uh, we love all of our former Ravens. Uh, Delshawn Phillips. Uh, he 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 snorted. Good, good grief! Like I did. Good grief! He sniffled. Uh, but no, he went to the text. It's ladies and gentlemen. Um, good grief! What the heck, bro? All right. He went to the Texans. Uh, another AFC South team. Uh, best of luck to him. Again, did do a whole lot last season. I think he was on our special teams. Um, but yeah, uh, good for Del Delshawn Phillips. This was a, probably the biggest player we lost. Uh, Patrick Queen signing with the Steelers, I think on a three year, $41 million deal. I think that I remember his contract, um, big right there. Uh, yeah, very controversial for obvious reasons that he went to the Steelers. Um, I thought he was going to go to the Seahawks with Mike McDonald and he was going to recruit a bunch of former Ravens. It's set the Chargers to do that because uh, obviously they're hosting JK Dobbins for a free agent visit today. Uh, I'll probably talk more on that later or anything else that I remember on top of my head for the Ravens wise. Um, but Patrick Queen to the Steelers, pairing up with TJ Watt and uh, all those guys. Uh, that defense is scary and that's not a good thing. So, but PQ, best of luck to you. Tyler Ott going to the Commanders, long snapper filled in for uh, Nick Moore who uh, missed the entirety of last season with an Achilles injury uh, during the preseason. Uh, but Tyler Howard was really solid for us, holding the kicks for Justin Tucker and kick, kickoffs and punts and all that stuff. So good job for Tyler Howard going to the Commanders. Tyus Bowser was the only player we have. Actually, no, he's one of two players we released. First one was Tyus Bowser. He was big with cap space, and he hasn't really been ha healthy since in like two years. So we had to do that. I'm sorry, business, business, Tyus Bowser, but we love you. You were, you were solid when you were healthy. The second player we released was Odo Beckham Jr., this stung because obviously OBJ is OBJ. A lot of people said he was washed. And I mean, yeah, he wasn't like big, but he helped a lot. I think his veteran role, his leadership role, not a lot of people know that because obviously people think OBJ is this thug who does all this stuff. No, no, no. He has a big personality and he's, his kindness looms large and we appreciate OBJ, everything he did, those three touchdowns, those, everything, everything, all those catches. Uh, you got paid a lot for those catches, so treat him, treat him well, uh, OBJ, and uh, best luck to you wherever you go. Probably with the Dolphins. They made a contract offer to him as we speak. We'll see. We'll see if the Dolphins sign him. I don't want him to go to the Dolphins. I don't like the Dolphins after what they did to us in 2022 when they came back and we choked. Oh, boy. Morgan Moses got traded to the Jets. He's the only player that we traded. Uh, second year in a row, by the way, we traded a player to the Jets. Last year was Chuck Clark. I guess he wanted out. And then this year, Morgan Moses traded back to the Jets because, uh, you know, the Jets originally had Morgan Moses. Pair him up with John Simpson. And obviously, I think they also got, um, oh my gosh, I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Uh, Tyron Smith, I think that's his name, uh, from the Cowboys. Uh, so yeah, you definitely need protection for Aaron Rodgers after watching last season. Good grief. Uh, four plays that uh, that sucks, but hopefully Aaron Rodgers will be. I'm sure he'll be back next season, better than ever. Uh, Morgan Moses, though, best luck to you again. He was another our O line struggle with penalties. I think he was another one of them, but he still he can still be productive. He can still be good. Best luck to you. Tyler Huntley went to the Browns. Uh, another player going to the Ops. I think a lot a lot of I think every team in the AFC North stole at least one of our players. So good for the good for you Browns. Uh, I don't know really uh, what to say about this because um, they got rid of Joe Flacco. He went to the Colts, uh, but they have Deshaun Watson. They have DTR, and they also signed Jameis Winston. I don't know what that's going to be for Tyler Huntley, if he's going to be like third or fourth string or maybe second string. I don't know. DTR didn't look that impressive last season, which is kind of disappointing because I was rooting for him. He looked really good in the preseason. I thought he was going to be really good, but I guess not. But still, rookie, rookie, doing rookie stuff. But... 
Best look to Tyler Huntley. He when he was a backup, he was really good. But I feel like when he was a starter, he just he was good. He was fine. He was one of the best backups. There was a lot of mistakes. There was a lot of things he could have done better. Uh, but then again, every time he did come in, we had L receivers. I think like we had like I remember the you guys remember the Falcons game week sixteen. We, that was a game we clinched the playoff spot for twenty twenty two. But we had like our wide receiver core was like Demarcus Robinson, Deshaun Jackson, and Sammy Watkins. Like no wonder he can't throw. He couldn't throw the ball right because he had L receivers. There's a reason why Lamar Jackson runs, not throws. Because why would you want to throw? You have L receivers. <laughs> Good grief! But now we got Zay Flowers, and maybe we'll sneak in another uh, veteran wide receiver. We'll see. Who knows? Or one for the draft. Who knows? Kevin Zeitler went to the Lions. Kevin Zeitler was really good. I think he, after we beat the Niners, I think he officially beat every team in the NFL. The only other player I know to do that is Tom Brady, but I'm sure other players have done that, and I don't know. But Kevin Zeitler, really good for us. Um, he's really productive. Um, you can always count on him. He's a veteran. Uh, he's always he's always good. Uh, so good job for the Lions doing that. Pairing up with Panay Sewell and all those other players, uh, Frank Regna and uh, Taylor Decker, who didn't, he reported eligible that freaking game, bro. Oh my gosh, that Cowboys game, that was ridiculous. But Kevin Zeller, welcome to the Lions. And finally, uh, yesterday, Jadavion Clowney went to the paint. I was, I think, on a two-year deal. <laughs> Jadavion Clowney, a lot of people said he was washed also, but he tied his career high in sacks, nine and a half sacks. Uh, he missed like 20 of them, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, Jadavion Clowney was really solid, really good. Really productive, and it sucks now that we don't have any more. Now we gotta establish the edge rush issue. Uh, a lot of people didn't notice it until after David Clowney left, and now they realize, oh, we need an edge. So we'll probably have to resign Kyle Van Noy, maybe get one from the draft. Who really knows? Uh, just checking to see if there's any other things for the Ravens. I don't think there is. Uh, get one here from Ram Ramsey. Ramey, okay, no, never mind, he didn't have anything, but that's it, that's all the players we lost, that's all the players and all that stuff, uh, let's talk about some other things that happened Ravens-wise, uh, like I mentioned, J.K. Dobbins is visiting with the Chargers today, I don't know how his interview went, or all that, um, but, uh, there's no way he and Gus Edwards decided to tag team to leave the Ravens to go with Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers, that's, that's kind of crazy, that's kind of crazy, but anyways, um, he seems poised to make a comeback, and you know what, J.K. Dobbins, I think you still have something in you. When you're healthy, you're really good. Problem is, you you it, you just haven't been able to catch a freaking break the last few seasons. But I believe in you, you'll be fine. Uh, Angie Voorhees, I'm glad I went to Twitter and uh, looked at this. Uh, Angie Voorhees, obviously we drafted him, but he missed all last season because of an injury, an ACL injury, suffered way back in college with the USC. Um, but... I think Andrew Voorhees can help our O-line out. He can be really productive. I hope wish him the best of luck. Whatever he does for us this upcoming season. Um, we hosted Josh Reynolds for a visit. Uh, but uh, I think it was a few days ago he signed with the Broncos. So that's the end of that. Uh, but the day before that, we hosted Michael Gallup for a visit. At this point, Michael Gallup, I think, is still a free agent. Um, if I could check and back that up, I think he's still... Yeah, he's still a free agent. Um... So we're going to sign Michael Gallup, or we're going to draft a receiver. What are we going to do? We always love to uh, get veteran receivers, or as people say, we always love to get wash players. But we always do, we always are one of the best uh, teams in the NFL when it comes to drafting. We always do a really good job at that. I have no doubt that EDC and John Harbaugh will cook as they have done in the draft. A lot, a lot, a lot, all the other years. Um, so there's that. Trying to think, is there anything else? I don't really think there is. Uh, but this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you uh, lose in the AFC Championship. When you have a, a high-talented roster and you don't win the Super Bowl, don't even make the Super Bowl, let alone you just lose in the AFC Championship. That's... Man, man, man. I know business is business, and I understand. Uh, according to someone on uh, Snapchat, one of my friends on Snapchat, it happens to everyone. It happens to all the NFL teams. But good grief. We gained like four... We, we sent four players, and we lost like 20. Probably not 20, but I, I don't know. I don't know the exact number, but it's a lot. <laughs> But anyways, that's going to do it for this episode of, uh, not this episode, but just, you know, recap and Ravens free to see. Uh, if more happens, obviously I'll let you know. I'll try to get back to posting. I probably won't post a whole lot, like, in the next few days or next week or so, because obviously we'll be on vacation for spring break. I'll join myself. I think I'll be back Wednesday uh, or Thursday or whenever. Um, I'll be back Wednesday. I'll probably recover Wednesday <laughs> when I go back home. Uh, I'll have a slot filled 
Thursday before I go back to my dad's uh, next with the week, the next weekend, next weekend. Um, so there's that. Uh, I probably plan on doing. I thought I was gonna make one more video, maybe like a pre. What was I gonna do? A pre, a prequel to the Richmond? Or, or I did that yesterday. I did that yesterday. Uh, dang it! I just saw the Bucks lost to the Pelicans. I got that notification. Dang it! I'm a Milwaukee, I'm a Milwaukee Bucks fan. For those who don't know, yes, I'm Ravens fan, Bucks fan, Cubs fan, Blackhawks fan. No name fan. Yeah, that's not controversial at all. But that's that's story for another time. If you want to hear that story, then let me know. Good grief. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Smash like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell that we never miss any videos like this one. As always, that is Cloud Nine. Don't support that. So just do it as a suggestion by yours truly. And I'll see you guys whenever the heck the next video comes out. Again, I'll be gone for spring break i think we're leaving saturday so i think i can upload one more video tomorrow but if not then i'll see you guys whenever i post again and whether it's tomorrow or in a week or in a month or if i never post again this is the last video you see then this is the last video you see but <laughs> probably won't but anyway see you guys then bye